five of the 15, and now it's, it's really five of about 20, because we have more data since then, um, that have an exceedance. And were they in any way localized, or were they kind of spread out over the Spread out. Um, you have, two of those were pretty far away, 2,500 to 3,000 foot away, one in, in, in towards the Turnpike and one towards the Township building here. Um, those were the higher concentrations. And then, you know, some of them, the rest of them were uh, more local to the quarry, but about 500 to 1,000 foot away. And those concentrations were in the teens um, or, or, or low tw 20s. Um, so what you see there is a correlation with a limited data set. Um, that you, you see higher concentrations in our data set farther away than you do closer. Um, our monitoring wells that, that we have sampled on the quarry where you have the greatest drawdown uh, have been non-detect. Um, so there's been no detection of arsenic in those wells? In those wells, up, up to this point. On uh, site. Right. Uh, you, you take a step farther out, uh, you see detections, but they were below statewide health standards. Take another step out, and that's where you see some of those uh, sporadic again um, in that 500 to 1,000 foot range where they're in the teens or, or low 20s concentrations. And again, farther out, we saw higher concentrations. Um, this is exactly why we proposed the sampling program that we proposed. Because just like the USGS spent years and years and years gathering data to make the conclusions that they made, um, more data is, is going to help support either what we're saying or, or the opposite, which is why we're proposing to, uh, to do this monitoring for the three-year period and get more data. Because uh, the more data that we have, and, the, and, and when we spread that out over a map, it, it'll start showing if there are trends, or if it is random, like it's consistent with what USGS is reporting. Question. Sure. In um, I think in the original 1992 agreement, you are responsible for, you agreed to be responsible for the quantity of water, regardless of fault. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So, would you consider taking the same responsibility for the quality of the water? The law requires that if there's a diminution in quality or quantity that the quarry is required to replace the system, required to replace a water supply that meets the quality and quantity that is required for the use of the property. But isn't that a burden of proof there required that the quarry caused the, the uh, contamination? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying Without uh, worrying about the burden of proof, would you just accept that responsibility like you did with the quantity? So what you're saying is anytime someone has a problem with their well, whether it's quantity or quantity, quality, right. um, really whether it is related to the quarry or not, would we accept corrective action? Exactly. Well, that's, what, that's what you said with the R stuff. The only thing that's really been raised is the arsenic, and that's why the condition is that if there's an elevated level of arsenic within that area, that the quarry would put in a treatment system. That was the whole point of that, uh, that condition, proposed condition number three. The condition, the condition says, uh, although arsenic is a naturally occurring compound, uh, that nasal materials is sensitive to neighbors' concern is willing to offer the following, so that anybody within that 1,500 feet that had an elevated level of arsenic would get a treatment system regardless of whether or not uh, uh, there was any proof that it was being caused by the quarry, because we, we listened to the concern uh, and uh, I uh, thought that he, even though we don't believe, as Mr. Britton explained, that there's any correlation, nonetheless, we recognize that people are concerned, just like this gentleman over here. So uh, that's why that condition was proposed. But the residents still 
assume, assumes responsibility for the maintenance. That's right. I'd like to say that from the time I've been on this rock, I've just spent some time in the parking and if we're going to have a report card for the remediation efforts of H and K on wells that are going dry, etc., just for the quantity issues, I'm afraid they fail. Because I've heard story after story that are absolute horror stories. Well, it's easy to say, but it's not true. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my name's Paul Helm, West Rock Hill, Miles up the road. I've been here 44 years. Ever since the quarry, which got rid of my well and they had to dig another well, the water is horrible. Now, before that, we didn't have a water problem. Now that quarry, how long has that quarry been there? About 25 years now? Something like that? Before that, we didn't have a problem, but our well was only 120 feet deep. So the deeper you go, the more likely from sediment and settling and all from 100 million years ago, whatever, <coughs> then you're going to have more problems. Tell them about Kitty. Well, yeah. if the quarry wasn't tell there, Kitty. Huh? Tell them about Kitty. Frankie said, tell them about Kitty. Well, Kitty, my wife had cancer. I don't know what it all came from, but she had cancer. I have a touch of cancer myself with my prostate. But, you know, just to keep it within here, I don't, you know, if something is caused by something, you go back to the cause. And if the cause was the quarry, and they had to go down deeper, which is picking up the sediment and everything, well, whose fault's that? The quarry wasn't here 25 years ago. Didn't have that problem. That sound logical? <coughs> From a hundred point, does that make sense? Well, they issue up here, and now he's got an issue down here because they just drill the, the, the water quality deeper awesome. could be different than it is. What's shallow. your address, sir? Huh? Address? Your address. Your name? Address 2028. Bridge Road, Sellersville, PA. So Matt, what were you just trying to explain there? With the depth? I said the water quality could be different, shallow versus deep. I mean, it could be different. As far as the sediment goes, um, you know, when a driller drills a well, they do what they call developing the well, and they pull the sediment out prior to putting the pump in. And they use 1,500 PSI of pressure to pull that sediment out. So it's unlikely that that you're getting a lot of sediment in there from your well, um, it's probably a result of the pump kicking on and, and particulates sitting on the pump that, that when the pump kicks on, it shoots the sediment up into your holding tank. Um, what you do is, you again, you, you put a, a filter on it. Filtration you, is your answer to everything, right? For your, to solve for your problem, our problem. Well, 32 years of doing hydrogeology in this area for, for major water supply companies, they all have the same problem. It's not, you know, it's not a quarry being, it's, it's the formation, and they all use water treatment, they use filtration. That's what you use. That's, that's the alternative to, to having public water connected. That's, that is the only alternative, is to put filtration on. There is no other answer, other than drink it without filtration. I, you know, uh, the woman in the back was oh, Pat, I'm sorry. Patrice Swade of Central and Padre Valley Road. Um, I heard you um, about an hour ago tell me about water pumping level. You said that your, your water pumping level would not change. Did I get that right? The rate. The, 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 the amount of pumping that we're currently doing is not going to change or we're not going to propose as part of this expansion to increase our, our pumping rate. So does that mean that the groundwater level is not expected to change? The groundwater level uh, is not expected to change at the quarry and, and our groundwater model does show how the expansion will impact the zone of influence and the zone of influence is essentially the predicted uh, level of or area that drawdown to the, of the groundwater table could occur. 
And if you look at the groundwater model, you see, um, and, and the plans that were presented, the impact of this expansion is, is limited to th this direction, towards the township building, and, it, and it's essentially a sliver. And that's mainly because the, that Kuna depression and that, that drawdown is, is already occurred through most of this area. And essentially, you're going to push out about an additional 300 foot. So it has that, that impact, but it's, it's limited to that, you know, in, in that zone of influence. It's limited because of the pumping that's already been occurring. Okay, so I'm not in the business, I'm not a hydrologist, um, but what I'd like to understand is what are the if you're not expecting the groundwater level to change, um, is there any actual test test that's done to tell you that, or uh, test data that's available to tell you that, or is it just bas basically an intuition? No. So, so we we perform a groundwater model to 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 predict what those impacts would be, what the where to, where and how much drawdown will occur as you go away from the quarry. Okay, but how is that done? Computer modeling, I'll let Val, our, our groundwater model, yeah. explain that. What you do is you, you have to get water levels in wells that already exist. So you go out into the field and you okay. collect those water levels in yeah. the field. Now, what's that done? Has that been done? Oh, yeah, it's done. Because I, I understood you to say that you have done this for the arsenic, but have you done this just for the water level? I'm concerned about losing swamp areas and habitats in the township. They, Never mind poisoning. Them. How, how I often do you want to see the water level change? Yeah. How often do you collect those water water level? Monthly. Monthly. Yeah, they collect it on a monthly basis. And it has it changed. Up? It's changed since the quarry. Yeah, I mean, as as they as they deepen the quarry, the zone of influence expands, and the water level drops most in the in the area of the quarry, and then uh -huh. it expands kind of elliptically. There's a, a, a formation yeah, I, I, to the yeah, to the it's north. Yeah, like a funnel, and it's it's a, a funnel, and it's just falling down. Yeah, it, it, it reaches a point that it, it, it reaches an equilibrium at some point, and this, this, this expansion that they're going to do is so small that it's not going to have a huge impact on it. You know, it's not going to increase that zone of influence significantly. I mean, it's you know, a, a very small amount that it's going to increase the, the zone of influence. But you know, from what the static conditions were on the site, if they turned the quarry off tomorrow, the pumps, that water would recover you know, five, six years, it would reach the static level of where it was prior to, to any pumping. Nine more years is far expected to be in operation? I mean, before the machinery is turned off and we get our water level back? We, yeah, anywhere between, it, it depends on how much we take out, it's market driven to a certain extent, but anywhere between, I'll give you a broader range, 16 to 20 years, existing as we're permanent today. Mm -hmm. And how far out does that cone go? I, I've never asked this before, I have no... Yeah, it's more elongated. Uh, it runs towards the township building and then, and then opposite direction towards the turnpike. It's, it it's goes, not... It goes as far as the township building? No, 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 no. It's, do we have a slide of that? Yeah, we do. Yeah, I mean, there's. It's all through all the permit information. The permit applications all have the no, water level. information. Where is that? It's, it's submitted to the DEP, Hotel District Planning Office, on a quarterly basis. Okay. Um, so it, it is available to the public uh, through DEP. Okay. Um, certainly, that's something that we can provide with the township. So it's, it's all right, Tom. So the quarry's up here. This is the zone of influence. It's elongated mm -hmm. because there's a geologic formation up here. It's a magma, they yeah. call them a magma dike that runs up here that's not very permeable. 
So as they pump out here, it creates this elongated cone of depression because this area is not that permanent. Yeah, I understand. Um, the rows, I can't read your map. <coughs> Um, could you read some of the rows so to see how Just give far, her the, the, the... I see County Line Road, I see 563. So, um, uh, help me out. Where's that What's the name, name of the road, road like right here? I, I can't read them. I'll, uh, here, I can pull okay. it out of... Uh... Thanks, Dave. Do you want me to pull it? Yeah, make sure they understand. So this is Daniel's Road right here. Yep. Okay. Um, Lonely Road. Ridge Road coming through here, uh -huh. right there I'm crossing County Line Road, Ridge Road to Allentown to the Turnpike, and then correct. What what is the road that is at the top edge of the here? Yeah, well, bottom right here. So right here, good reference point, uh, Thousand Acre Road yeah. and Shady Lane. Is right there. Right. They mean the road furthest out, Ridge Road. Yeah, way past Lonely Road. Hayfler Road, right there. That's Hayfler up at the top edge of the town? Yeah. Can you show us the parcel that's in question for zoning? The parcel that's in question. The parcel yes. that we're requesting zoning <coughs> change is this part. I'm going to outline it the best I can right here. How many acres is that? It's 11 acres, 11.15. 11 acres. Does that open up to any other land that you own? Um, all these questions. Yeah, we got You have to raise your hand and wait for the address. Minutes because mm -hmm. we're okay. out of order. Mm -hmm. Scott, let me ask you. Um, this this map you have up now is that outer outer line to the east. Is that the new zone where the proposed? Uh, yeah. Imagine? On the plans in your submission, it, it's it's denoted in red. It's Right. So the impact of, to the, cone, the zone of influence is this outer line mm -hmm. as a result of the expansion. So it's, How it's, many acres do you think that encompasses? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to get that answer. Honestly, get back to it. All right. I thought you might have that answer. You said it was 300 feet, right? No, well, no. The, the, the expansion. So we're essentially pushing the high wall with this expansion from its existing limit that's permitted out about 300 foot. Uh, what was the difference in the, in the drawdown area? In that draw, the, like right there, that's going to be less, 100 to 150, okay. maybe. Okay. <coughs> this, this scaling, I mean, you can see, you know, from the existing permit line to our limit here, it's approximately 300 foot. So you can see just as a visual scale. Trish Herlinger, 410,000 Acre Road. Why yes, is Trish. 11 acres so important for rezoning? I don't understand what 11 acres, what you're going to get from 11 acres. Where, what else is the bigger picture? I don't understand. 11 acres. How much property right now do you did you quarry? The current permit is approximately 100 acres. And what's 11 acres going to do? It's going to extend the reserve. What was that answer? It's going to extend the reserves. That's Meaning, I don't understand that. It's like they filled out the application. It's well, it, it provides additional Trish, land to quarry. It's 35 to 40 million dollars in quarry. That's what he equates to. So is it is it about the money? Yes, it is. Of course. I'm asking it's great. somebody here. Is it? It's, it's about supply. It's about extending the, the life of the quarry. It's about ongoing business. And those 11 acres is going to extend per, um, how many more years <coughs> then? Additional to what you're saying right now? Mm -hmm. Approximately six. Approximately six acres. So six Based more on years. a five-year production average. Six more years. 11 acres and a community of unhappy people because you are part of our community now right i'm sorry you contribute to the community you're part of our community we are yes you are you are okay so 11 acres uh super along west Carfield township i don't quite understand that map it's the first time i've seen it. i want to ask a question 
is the old boundary on there with the new boundary? Is that why we have a double line? Yes. Okay. Zone of influence. Is, is okay. When you yeah, refer, I, I just is, want to make I sure mean, you're okay. when you say double line, you're referring to yeah, that. that. Is that yeah. like the old boundary versus the new Correct. boundary? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Now, on that 11 acres, it's sort of an odd shape there where you have that little uh, protrusion there. Mm -hmm. Does that lead to other property which is owned by the quarry that would eventually say, okay, well, you know, we just went here, that's what we're asking for, but then it's going to open up an avenue to. Do you own any more land up there that we're not that is not currently zoned for quarrying, surface mining, that is connected to those 11 acres and would open up as a result of opening up the 11 acres? So I'll answer the question in outlining all the properties that are under ownership or affiliation with the quarry. And tell me the zoning see. as you go. Please. Okay. Okay. Um, these five parcels right here, where the existing or the original permit area. Um, they're owned by our landlord, Mignotti Companies. These three parcels here are part of or make up the expansion of the quarry that occurred in 2005. This, these two permits make up the operation that's operated as a whole today. This parcel right here is also owned by Mignotti, which we have zoning approval through our 1992 <coughs> agreement to, to, for extraction is operations. Is it currently being worked? No. No, it is not. It's, this property here does not have a mine permit boundary on it currently. This property is the one subject to the application that we're here to talk about that's owned by Naceville Materials. Nace Mill Materials owns the three parcels that were part of the 2005 expansion. I neglected to note that earlier. This parcel right here at the corner of Cameline Road and Ridge Road is owned by Naceville. And then the parcel that surrounds our entrance off of Ridge Road is also owned by Naceville. And the zoning is? Rural conservation. So the zoning for extraction is this parcel right here, mm -hmm. or these three parcels that make up the 2005 expansion as well as the parcel that our entrance bisects from Ridge Road. All the other parcels are, are rural conservation. With the 19, residential conversation, conservation, sorry. With the 1992 agreement overlay of those six parcels right there. So that's all the property that H&K owns in that area? Correct. For 10,000 acre road, Trish Herlinger. So, if you were to get this rezone and you were able to extract, how many more properties will you buy? Because people are going to 1,000 uh, acre road where you're going up against my house. I'm sure you're going to knock on my door. Property next to me, all of Shady Lane. What are we supposed to do with our homes after it's destroyed? I have a simple question. You will own all those properties. Then what? Isn't that the big picture? That is the big picture. We have no plans to so you won't acquire buy your home, home or purchase, anybody okay. else's home. You don't have to acquire your home. Bob Rollins for 10,000 acre road. Thank you. So when you purchased that 12 acre property, that was you knew that there was a deed restriction on that that you weren't going to mine. Now all of a sudden you're looking for a permit for that. You didn't plan on doing that either, did you? It's just a building block. And our concern is, Trish Herlinger, my husband, Trish, is after you do that, and, and it goes, so like, I expect our well to go dry, probably with arsenic levels, my foundation to become worse than it already is, our pool is already ruined, um, I don't know, so if you don't offer to buy my home, the value of that home will be nothing, because it's already borderlined. The properties that are on our road now that are for sale cannot sell. So I, that to us, I mean, that's our livelihood um, for five years of your livelihood um, for this 11 acres. And if there's wetlands within that 11 acres, then what are you looking at? Maybe six acres. 
really, I mean, that's, so that's a concern, and I, I, don't, I don't hear any answers to that. Like, what's going to happen to my property? What do I do? Yes. Bob, Bob earlier for ten thousand acres. And and once you're done this, once you're done your mining and you extract everything you possibly can out of whatever you're getting, what about the reclamation reclamation process? How long is that going to take? And isn't that just bringing trash in here to fill up a hole? How long is that projected to take? Do you have any idea how long? Well, I want to talk about the reclamation that's already done. I know that we've we've talked through that some already. Uh, Trish, I don't have an answer for, for what you're going to do with your property. I, I, I don't know. You know, that's completely entirely up to you. Um, we no, do know. We, we, no, we, really we, we do know. What do you know? That properties have sold within our uh, contiguous area. Um, Scott represented one or two of those. I don't recall all the properties that... Uh, you came up with when you, you did bought, your study? Though. How many of the properties surrounding the quarry have you bought? There's the ones, ones that Scott has outlined. The but homes. others have sold, others have um, been on the market and, and moved. When we did the, uh, the report on the uh, reclamation, what the plan looks like, and then some of the uses that occur after the mine's done and, and reclaimed, um, there's a host of things that, that get done with those, those properties. Um, most of them continue to, to go on the way they are. Some turn into um, housing developments. They, they thrive just as they, they are today. So, but what you do with your property is entirely up to you. No, not after it's been destroyed. That's not true. If it's been completed, then it's up to you. That's not true. That is so not, that's not true. But thank you for trying to answer the question. Scott, were you going to address I the I think there was a, a reclamation. Okay. I, I think the question was how long or how much has been done. Um, the, the reclamation plan for this quarry right now is, is, is post-mining land use is, is an unmanaged natural habitat and unmanaged water impoundment. So Could you speak up, please? We're required to, to reclaim the high walls at the perimeter to a 35 degree floor. That's the, the reclamation. Every area in this quarry today that can be reclaimed has been reclaimed to that 35 degree slope. I'm talking about the big hole in the middle. The, okay. You're not going to bring any debris in there. You're not filling it up with so what you're road talk trash and everything else. More trucks. Once everything's depleted and you start bringing trash in there to fill up that hole, how we, long is that going to take? We would never be allowed to bring trash in. Well, there no, but some of the other quarries that you do own, you bring concrete clean, and clean fill black materials. top. And, yeah, and how long yeah. is, are you projected is that going to take? We don't have a proposal for that at all at this at this quarry. If if you get res, res, if you get the extraction <coughs> rezone for extraction, does that open the door for them to be able to do that? Once that's extra, get rezoned for extraction, does that give them the right to do whatever they want without coming to you first? Do, do you, they need permission once that's rezoned? Does that cut you guys out of the loop? For what? I don't know. I'm just for asking. Reclamation. I'm just a bricklayer. Right. I, I just know that when you go to get a rezoning for, I, I brought this up before, from residential rezoning to industrial to commercial to whatever, I'm not quite sure. I'm not a miner. I haven't done it for three generations. I don't know what door this is going to open up. If they get to get rezoned to whatever they want to do, I don't know what other, out of the 181 pages. That, that, that 10 acres. Where does that let them, and what does that let them do somewhere down the line? That 10 situation? acres will make absolutely no difference in what the reclamation plan of this quarry is, but the current reclamation plan, as Scott said, is a water impoundment surrounded by uh, an unmanaged, in other words, semi-wild uh, 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 area. So, so there's the no area brought in nothing else. You're not going to be bringing in concrete or blacktop the, or asphalt, the, which can the, contaminate the, more the water. The approved plan so, is a water impoundment. There is no approved plan to have a clean landfill, which is what you're talking about. In a residential conservation area or in an extraction area, or does not that matter? Again, I'm a bricklayer, so I'm just well, trying to make sure. You may be a, a bricklayer, and I'm sure this, you're a good one. 
I, I am. That's why I'm asking. But the, I'm, I'm, I'm the, plan, the plan is that it will fill up with water, and that's not, that isn't going to be different if this 10 acres is rezoned or it isn't rezoned. The plan is to let it fill up with water. And nothing else. That's all that's permitted. For now. That's all that's permitted. For now. Well, oh, if this 10 acres is rezoned, it is not going to make a difference. You can't answer the, no, the, the question. Acres. Excuse me, sir. My turn. Whether this property is rezoned or not will make absolutely no difference in how the quarry is reclaimed. But the answer is that the permitted reclamation is a water impoundment. If we replaced them, uh, we felt that there was a potential impact, and that's why we, re we, we either re-drilled or dr uh, drilled a new well or deepened the existing well, um, because that's our obligation through our mining permit and through the state regulations to replace a water supply if it's impacted in quantity by the quarry. I don't think any gentleman sitting there would really want to put up with what these poor people are putting up with, with their water supply. When we moved into the area 30 years ago, we had no problems. This gentleman has gone through hell where he's located. I can't understand why this is even being talked about at this point to even ask for a, ch a zoning change. We have constitutional rights to, to good air and good water. Why is there an issue with the zoning? Why is there a question about it? Because obviously, these people, they want their water to stay as it is. And if you expand, aren't you going to be there another 18, 20 years yet? Isn't that enough for you people to keep drilling all of that time? And that's going to change our water too, probably, in 18, 20 years. But why would you want to rezone and change this? The people here, we've had enough. Uh, you know, 15, 16 wells, that's just one too many that have gone dry. And in one year. Yeah, in I one got, year. Not to mention. Hang, hang, we, we've had so many other people with their hands. So right. we're very frustrated. I don't understand why there's a zoning question at this point. Well, because we, they put in an application and we have to. Okay. Well, have to listen. people are speaking. And, and we're listening, believe me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Pat. Uh, hi, uh, Patrice Squerno, uh, 705 Ridge Island Road. Um, how, how deep, at, at the point of reclamation, how deep will this hole be? From ground surface down to, the, yes. to, to its down ultimate to the bottom. bottom. Uh, depending on where you're at, around the perimeter of the quarry, 200 to 250 foot. Okay, and... As, as it's permanent uh, could you, today. Could you clarify, who is going to pay, who, is it the township responsible for any part of paying for the reclamation? Shouldn't be. Okay. No. And uh, also, in, in terms of how deep that is, and it's full of water, is there going to be a fence needed to put a, you know... I, I don't see how that's a natural wild habitat, it, it's a hole that deep. That's... Fence? <laughs> I don't know what to say. Is there a planned fence that will go around this deep hole? Right. It, it's, it's fenced today, and it, there would be, it could be, and would be uh, a proposed fence and, and managed fence as part of the post mining land use. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a natural habitat. It's a fenced off area that's not really good even to wildlife. That's just the way I see it. 
Thank you. Uh, Bob. Oh, oh, Simmons Road. Uh, I, I have a question. We're at, the, we're at the Planning Commission. We have a lawyer here. Maybe he can explain this because it's a little fuzzy. If this is about rezoning, why are we at the Planning Commission? Because why, why didn't you go to the zoning board, the zoning hearing board? Because the the zoning law in Pennsylvania is something called the Municipalities Planning Code. And it says that when you want to file a when a property owner wants to file a petition to rezone, it files it with the township, and then it comes to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission makes a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors, and the Board of Supervisors then acts on the petition. So, so that's, what the, that's what the law requires. Okay, the Municipal Code requires that you go through the Planning Commission, then the Supervisors, not the zoning hearing. That's correct. Okay, thank you. And as far as the fence is concerned, the fence that we have at the m, &M Quarry is an eight-foot fence with three pieces of barbed wire on the top of it, and it is not a natural wildlife mm -hmm. habitat. It's a hole in the ground that's been ruining this township. That was the point I was trying Yes. Go so, look at, go look at the m, &M Quarry. You'll see what we, mm -hmm. you're going to wind up with. No, that's not true. That quarry has true. not been, just a moment, that quarry has not been reclaimed, and that's part of the problem, that, that uh, it has not been reclaimed, uh, so the, the, you cannot compare what that site looks like to the reclamation of this site. Thank you. Uh, Kathy. Kathy Gerhardt, um, Thousand Acre. Um, I guess I'll stand up. <laughs> um, you had talked about the arsenic. Sorry, I'm not sure exactly what you're um, Arsenic being tested in homes around the quarry. How many actual homes around the quarry were tested for arsenic? I think it was 15. For sure, probably at this point, at least 20. 20. Within the last 18 months to probably approaching two years now. Um, By what I'm counting, Briefly, in your circle of the 1,500 feet, there's approximately 50, or 50 residents. Right. How many of those were actually tested? So, in the last two years, it's about 15 to 20. Okay. And they're associated with our well regionals or, or people that we've encountered and, and had conversations with as part of this process. Um, prior to that, I mean, this spreadsheet here is a record of all the residents that we've encountered, whether it was a uh, a well complaint uh, that resulted in impact as a result of the quarry or, or we responded because uh, they thought it was a well complaint and it turned out to be just a system problem. There's a hundred entries here um, and a fair amount of them we've sampled pretty much everyone where we've done a redrill or, or uh, deep in the well. Um, since the last two years we had one uh, result of arsenic that exceeded the statewide health standard on Ridge Road. Um, obviously our data set over the last two years has expanded and we have additional information. So it's 20 results over the last 18 to 22 years, 18 months to, to 24 months, but we have a larger data set um, since 1998-1999, that's as far back as this goes, um, where we sampled a lot of wells, a lot more wells, and of those, there was one that exceeded arsenic in that data set. Okay, our well was really redrilled in 2005. Correct. We had tests done in 2005. By you, it was uh, Correct. your, I guess it was Garber that actually did it. Garber did the drilling and, and, and the permitting, the and the, it was permitted through the health department and sampled at that time. And you took care of us for a year with water. Because our, our well was contaminated with the uh, iron bacteria. You took care of us. Thank you. But um, recently, last December, at the township meeting, my husband mentioned what we had in our well. It was the, the smell and the yeah. smell, the sludge, right. the whole nine yards there. You came out in February, retested our well. You gave us an iron bacteria. Breaker, iron breaker, right. and a water softener. Thank you. 
But now you just came out again since one of our other neighbors, actually two of our close neighbors, have arsenic showing up in their well. You came out and tested our well. We still haven't got those results back yet. We don't I haven't gotten them back yet. Okay. But you came out to check our well. Right. So you must have concern about our well. Well, back in December when, when uh, your husband approached me, um, we didn't do a full-blown analysis at that time. Yeah. We targeted, what we, we pulled what we call a vendor sample. And, and that sample is focused on parameters that are more aesthetic, because that's what he, he expressed the concern. It was a, an odor. Um, so we, we pulled that type of sample because it targets that, those types of analytes, and, and obviously it helps us to identify what the appropriate treatment system is. So that's why we pulled that sample, and, and, and we used that to uh, spec the appropriate system, which was the iron breaker. Uh, and, and, and the water softener. Um, you're right, your neighbor, we, we've been dealing with them, and I provided the uh, results of that uh, vendor sample right. to you, and I, I offered and said, you know, if you'd like, we can do a full suite uh, of tests, um, simply because we're trying to get more data. And, and based on all these discussions that we've had over the last hour and a half to, to two hours. Um, so really, it was, it was, it was an offer um, one is an offer to you, but also to get some additional information. You know, and, and once I get those results, we'll look at them and, and we'll present them to you. And um, obviously, if there's there's you know something there, we'll we'll have to talk about it and, and, and address it. And it wasn't because of our neighbor having very high levels of arsenic. No. It's just no. because of. You no, know, he reached out to us and and, and had the same uh, similar concerns, and, and we tested. You know, just like. When people reach out to us, uh, you know, later, you know, four years, five years, and they have uh, a, a concern, we'll come out and we'll, we'll address it and look at it. And certainly, if we get results that are, are differing than we had before, we'll we'll, we'll look at it and, and deal with it. Yeah. Kathy, did you get results uh, as to why you were having an odor in your water? Um, we just got the results back uh, October 13th. They gave us the results back for. Um, the test they did on February 3rd, February 22nd of this past year. So February 22nd to October 13th, it took us that long to get the results from it. Um, but we also discussed the results of your husband, and we also came out and gave the results. That was an oversight, to be quite okay. honest. Um, but we wanted the full. We wanted to see it. Of you know, course, what of did course. you actually get the results of? And we didn't see that. I, I understand. Um, but it certainly wasn't hid from you. I don't have it sitting in front of me what the actual results were. Do we know what caused the odor? Yeah. Uh, well, it, it was the iron, iron bacteria. Because yeah. uh, our filter, we, our filter used to fill up with the sludge, the, the mud. The whole house filter used to fill up with sludge and mud, and real s s smelly. So the the iron breaker, which Scott had installed, is supposed to catch that and take it out, but it doesn't take it all out. It's still in there. It's still. So it goes into the softener. Now the softener has the bubbling from. Uh, this gentleman had talked about the, 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 the uh, from the iron bacteria, the, the bubbly in there, it's, it's still there. So, but that was the initially the problem I talked to Scott back last year was the iron bacteria and the sludge and the sulfur smell. That you would take a shower in the morning, you smell like sulfur because that water was, was so strong, sulfur smell. And when uh, the well driller came out and smelled, he smelled it right away. He said, Yeah, it's, it's, it's got the iron bacteria in it. And they say iron bacteria doesn't hurt you, you can drink it, but it just it smells like crap. I'm not eating spaghetti. It smells like sulfur. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, does it cause an orange color? Orange, sludgy. Yeah. Um, actually, green, green, slimy. Yeah. yeah. Muck, muck, black muck. It's like it's like this. Is, it, is this still going on? Yes. The iron, the, the iron breaker, does catch so. probably fifty percent of it, seventy percent of it, but it still gets through the system. Our property is actually the back where they proposed for the uh, expansion. The part that comes down into the flag, like flagpole, right there. Uh, that's our property there. So our house is actually at the very front of the property, but still, we're surrounded by <coughs> the quarry directly, right there. We're one of the closest people. Uh, not Trish, Trish and uh, Bob are pretty close too, closer, but our proposal closer, is closer. we're close. All right, I got a question. Uh, so, 
Sue Furlong, West Rockville Township. Um, I have a couple of questions. I haven't mentioned any focus there. Um, I see a perimeter there, and I see a lot of people here, and they're attesting that they're having this, that, and the other water problem. And you're saying, well, it's really not us, but we'll help you anyway. I think in most scientific studies, you have a control group, and then you have the group that you think is affected. I'd love to know, just beyond your assumed boundary, for you to go around and test those wells, and if you've got this background arsenic, it ought to come in at about the same uh, parts per million or whatever it is that you're getting within that perimeter, if what you're saying is true. And until you tell me that you've got results that show me that outside the perimeter matches inside the perimeter, because I believe that this um, formation that you're talking about that got laid down 80 million years ago, from what I can tell <coughs> from what you're saying, is in this whole area. So I've got a well. I, I don't know. I haven't been able to walk over there and see what that looks like. So I may be within your perimeter. I may not be. But I've got a couple of wells on my property. I've got some neighbors here. They have wells. If I'm outside that perimeter, I'd like for you to tell me that, well, I don't want you to tell me, but um, that my arsenic is as high as their arsenic. Therefore, you've done a, sign, a truly scientific sampling where you've got your control group and then you've got your other group and compare those two uh, groups. And until you do that, I don't know if what you're telling me is accurate or not. I have to be honest about it. The other thing is, let's say you go out of business. Everybody decides to retire, move to Florida or whatever, or you sell it to the Chinese or somebody. And all of a sudden, all these promises, is there an escrow account? Are you bonded? What happens? These people have been dealing with this for 20 years, and they're looking at another 20 to 25. And so they're stuck. Some of them are already stuck. Some of them feel like they're about to get stuck. So, you know, are you going to deliver water? You're going to test her well? You're going to do this? You're going to do that? Okay. If you go out of business, you're sued by somebody, some liability you never foresaw, and all of a sudden you shut down and you shutter the place up, what do these people have? You have eminent quarry. <clears throat> That's what you have. So, Let you know, answer. I'd like to have a, uh, you know, if it were me and I'm close to you, and I don't know, I might be, I don't know what's on that map. I'd like to have some kind of an escrow account or a bond, something that tells me that the promise made tonight it's still going to be there 20 years from now, the way you're telling me it's going to be. I don't want to, I, hey, you so know, quite it, frankly, a couple of you look a little old to me. Uh, <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> this well, is a young guy I'm next older, to me. I'm older than what I look. That's what I keep telling myself. But, um, so anyway, you know, if you make me a 20-year promise, fine. I want it kept, especially if it's the value of my home. Because... For most of these people, that's probably their largest asset if they're like me. And so for you to waffle out five years from now, I think we'll cut it. I need a bond. I need an escrow account. I need somebody that's going to keep that 20-year promise. Okay, Scott, you want to answer that? <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so it's a two-part question. So yes. I'll, I'll get, attack the first part. Um, and you talk about a control study. All right. And, and in what Val provided in this submittal, and he did describe and, and discuss earlier tonight, um, we, our control study, and this is just one of many, is a USGS report where they spent many, many years collecting data in this formation specific to, to arsenic, um, away from quarries. One study site near a quarry. Uh, I think that was it studied five or six uh, different locations in, in the same formation. Where are they located in relationship to where we're sitting tonight? I'd have to go through it. I know there's uh, at least two or three that are local. Um, Just in southeastern Pennsylvania. Southeastern Pennsylvania, northern Bucks County. Um, They're all within the Brunswick Formation. Correct. Which is the geologic, is. which is okay. this formation. It's do, we have, do we have a slide that shows Ooh. the distribution of the contaminants? Yeah, and I'll get to that. Um, so... This, for 
his study and his letter that he provided in this in this uh, most recent submission is the control group, and this provides um, arsenic concentrations ranges, which you talked about, uh, as high as 70, 75, whatever it was, as low as what we're seeing, you know, in, in the teens. The 10, 10 micrograms per liter is the, is the uh, statewide health standard. So we use this as our control group, and we took our data set and studied that and compared it. And are we seeing any differences? Are the concentrations that we're seeing consistent with what's reported by their study? Um, is there anything that's elevated? Are, are the percentages of, of hits above the statewide health standard for the data set, um, our data set, and the number of samples versus theirs consistent? You know, is 10% or 15% of what they sampled exceed statewide health standards? And what does our percentage look like? Our data set's very consistent with this. Now, we acknowledge that it's 15, 20 wells, whatever it was. It's what we have right now, which is why we proposed to do an extensive monitoring program for at least three years to gather more data. The more data you have, the, be the, 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 the better conclusions you can make, the better correlation you can make to uh, publish data like this that studied, in this case, arsenic concentrations in groundwater in this geologic formation. Um, right now, the information that we have in our data set is consistent with what we're seeing, what, what's reported by USGS. Um, the data doesn't show that the groundwater drawdown is causing an increase in arsenic concentrations that already naturally exist in the surrounding area. We can get to the, the, the slide that you referenced, Val. Um, but we looked at, at the, the data that we have in our data set and plotted it out in plan view, actually on this plan, to show, you know, how is that scattered? How is it arranged uh, around the quarry? And I'll describe it in words. What we saw was our monitoring wells surrounding the quarry where the greatest dewatering or the greatest drawdown occurs, the levels of arsenic were not detected. Step out a little bit farther, you see uh, detections, but they're below <coughs> statewide health standards. A little bit further, okay, now we're starting to see some detections above statewide health standards. But then go much farther out, and out here is where we have the highest concentrations. Farthest from the quarry, where the least drawdown or no drawdown is occurring. Now, do we need more data to, to add to that, to see if there's any trends? Absolutely, which is why we're proposing the monitoring program that we're proposing. Yeah. Uh, you, you, had another, yeah. you had another question. I did have another like question, question, but he just brought up something. He's talking about he's got this great big long perimeter. If I pull a drain and I've got like, you know, let's say styrofoam or something, it's out here that's going to start drying up first, as, and then this flows through and maybe washes out stuff. So when you tell me you got an outer perimeter where the arsenic is going up, I can see that because that's where the water starts to be the lowest first. Actually, it's the opposite. No, it's not going to be, no, because it's all going to be running towards your quarry. No, it's not true. The lowest water level is going to be at the quarry. That's the cone of depression right. that reaches out. And so out. it's all coming this way. Therefore, this dries out first. The groundwater flow floats. velocity is exactly the same throughout the formation into the quarry. It, 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 the most amount of flow, the most volume is occurring right around the quarry. That's what I'm saying. That's okay. exactly the what I'm you said no you said that the lowest water level would be out at the edges I'm, yeah because you've drained that because just what you've now said is that it's going to the quarry therefore it's not here and it sort of comes in I mean if I've got no that's that's incorrect it's the the, the deepest water the deepest depth to water where is the shallowest water the edges that's what I'm saying okay that's is not that what you said pouring... that's that's correct. That is, okay, I, I'm not perhaps expressing myself the way I should, but I'm saying you do see that on that perimeter, all of a sudden those water levels are dropping, and that's where you're getting an impact with your arsenic. And so that's where I would expect. The, the arsenic is actually, we have a distribution map, you know, 
there it, it, it's randomly distributed. There's not, you know, I, I'm not sure I would agree that there's a real pattern there. I mean, if we can show that map, you can we'll, we'll show you what the 15 samples came up and what they look like. And Maybe 15 samples isn't adequate. Well, I it's mean, what, I'm at a, a well, I have, I have 83, I have 83 samples that the USGS did, and if you extend out where we did, they have samples that they took. In this area? Yes, in this area. In what year? Yeah, what year? It and ranges. Do you have a before and after? What, before and after? Before. 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 Well, it, it, has, it has concentrations that are outside of any quarry influence, and it has some that are in the quarry. That doesn't even help me. It's got to be here. It's got to be what? If you took a sample down in Langmore or somewhere, that doesn't help me. But it's, it's the, the reason there's arsenic in the formation is because it's in the formation. It doesn't right, matter. so I need to know what the impact is here. Okay. This is that map we were, we were looking okay, at. You're actually talking about fine. These are the 15 samples that we took. The quarry, the quarry is right here. Okay. Right. The blue dots are basically non-detect. No arsenic was detected. The yellow dots or the, the green dots, arsenic was detected, but it's below the, the standards in Pennsylvania, which is 10 parts per billion. The yellow dots are concentrations that are over the 10 parts per billion. Okay, so they exceed the standard of arsenic. This distribution, to me, as a trained hydrogeologist, shows no pattern that the quarry is really causing high concentrations of groundwater, arsenic dissolved arsenic concentrations around the quarry at the edges. You have a fairly even distribution. You have clean samples here. You have you know, highly contaminated samples here. You have a in-between between the two, there's no real distribution here that shows that the quarry is creating an arsenic problem. If you step outside of this boundary, the USGS study <coughs> has additional wells out there that show the same random pattern of arsenic. And these concentrations, again, our concentrations, our highest concentration was 55 parts per billion. The USGS, outside of this area, their highest concentration was 70 parts per billion. Where can we see that? Those all, what, I was going to just say that. Are they all regulated at the same elevation? I mean, are some... Are they all the same? Are they, are the same are they all at 100 feet, 150 feet, 200 they, they feet? All vary. They're all the same dissolved ground. So that can't be... That's not accurate. That's not accurate. I don't understand why. Well, if you're here. saying that if the different sediments of whatever, if you're taking those blue dots that are 150 feet, oh, what is great here? And then at the, the yellow dots are all at 250 feet. Well, isn't that some kind of saying that, well, hey, 250 feet, we got a problem. Yeah, but, but when, you, when you pump a well, you're drawing water in from the entire column of, of, of aquifer, okay? These, these formations, the Brunswick formation is interconnected with a bunch of different fractures. So if you're pumping, this, this area is all, you know, think of it all solid rock with fractures running through it. As you're pumping that water in, you're pulling it from those fractures. You know, a fracture that's, that's, you know, pumping from this well may leave way over here, okay? Right. It, there's joints that go this way that it's pulling water from this direction, okay? The quarry is pulling huge amounts of water this way, okay? So you're, you're pulling the water in. You're sampling that water at those locations where you have that, that, that particular well. And and that's that's the that's representative of the groundwater in that location. Michelle, um, just like you don't show Michelle. my house. Oh, Michelle Shatter, two sixty plus an acre brick. Um, just like my house is never shown on these plans. Um, you're not showing my arsenic detection um, yellow dot in between those two up there. Actually, I know it's that one. Well, yeah, there's that, so me uh, and Kathy and. Are you didn't test? Oh, I thought you said you had. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. If I had them and, and there was, it would certainly be on here. Okay. One thing I want to note since you're, you're I'm sorry, I didn't mean to you. No, I was going to ask you. You said last I spoke to you that you were going to do another round of sampling in September. This is now November. I offered that up. And then your, your response was, it looks like we, we need to get a system. Um, I can get more data. But, you know, based on your concentrations and, and, and the two or three samples that we have, you know, you've had the detection. 
above the state with health standard. Right. It's going to be there. Um, to be honest with you, we never followed back up because I took your, your response that you were moving ahead with 